I've been watching you, Jack. You're curious. What are you looking for in those books? Do they bring back old memories? You won't get anything from me. My memory's been wiped to protect security the security of the mission. Yes. You can't have your precious memory falling into the wrong hands now, can you? Jack is a blue collar worker in the year 2077. He is one of the last humans left on Earth after a, a massive war that has left Earth basically uninhabitable. He fixes drones and he's in charge of security for the resource gatherers and those big machines that are gathering up uh, Earth's seawater to be utilized for the new colony on Titan. And that's his job. Every day he goes down to Earth and Vickas stays in the Sky Tower. Be careful out there. She trusts that he's a professional pilot and he's brilliant at his job. But he also knows that he has a taste for adventure. Jack is a bit of a cowboy. He needs to have an eye kept on him. 80,000 people on their feet watching this ball sail through the air. And downfield, a rookie wide receiver, third string, just leaps out of the pack. Touchdown. He feels such a pull to the earth, to home, that this is his home. I think that theme, it's a big theme in the film, what is your home? And this is his home, and he is questioning whether he wants to leave or not, but all the resources are going, and Vika can't wait to go to Titan. She has done the five-year tour of duty, and she is ready to move on. We've got survivors. There are four, check it, five survivors. This spaceship has crashed within his zone of operation, and suddenly there's that woman who he has dreamed about. And he's tried to block it out, but he's dreamed and he feels this pull to this woman. You've been in Delta sleep for a long time. How long? It's 60 years, at least. Her arrival turns his world upside down in, in really exciting ways. Tell me. Does he bring back old memories? He's the leader of a, at least one contingent of these fighters. He's a very angry man. What the hell is he talking about? No, everything's very still right now. No one's moving, just little feathers. Morgan has always been looking for an opportunity to work with Tom. So for this movie to be the opportunity to watch two icons finally come together, for me, it was a real thrill. Words that have come back to me about people who have met him is sweet. The way I would describe him, one word, is authentic. Our whole relationship, Jack and Vicar, has been very natural and so much fun and rewarding and fulfilling. I really admire him. The Rose Reading Room of the New York Public Library is under the surface, so we get to see him rappel into that space, you know, a 60-foot drop. He's up for anything. He really can do all those stunts on his own. There's no fear of heights. When we went to Earl's Peak and shot on the top of a mountain, you know, there's an 800-foot kind of sheer drop. Tom had no problem sitting on the edge there. We got some beautiful scenes of him just sitting on the edge of a mountain. I'm a lover of film, so I watch a lot of movies. And in growing up, you know, looking at, you know, Buster Keaton, uh, you know, Harold Lloyd, uh, Charlie Chaplin, the physicality of a character comes through. And that you can put the camera in places where you may not necessarily be able to put it there uh, if I don't do the stunt. It's storytelling for me, and it's how, how can I best bring the audience into the action, bring the audience into the story, and that's, that's how we always look at it. 
probably the biggest movie star the last 20 years, Tom Cruise, and just you know getting a chance to work with him, and then Morgan Freeman and Joe Kaczynski, the director. It's uh, yeah, it wasn't a difficult choice. There's some serious action sequences uh, in this movie, and I, you know, I've never done something on this scale. I had seen some images of Iceland. The landscape looks like really no other place on Earth. It's a, it's a volcanic island, black sands, no trees, just moss growing on the hillsides. There's a beauty in the desolation there, and that seemed to kind of fit the aesthetic I wanted for Oblivion. Conceived an idea where he would put camera mounted up on a volcano in Maui and have film be shot for two weeks so that he would have footage that he could play all around us. Joe's eye and how he shot it is just so fast and it just seems to go on forever. Showed me set drawing, showed me set being built, showed me the sled being constructed. The whole philosophy for the movie was to try to build everything we could, to try to shoot everything in camera, to shoot as much on location as we could. So we decided that it made sense to build a full-scale version of the bubble ship. Here you go. <laughs> Tom Cruise is sitting on my left side in the gimbal. It's all fine. <laughs> So of course I felt his support and he was always very enthusiastic about it and he was excited about it, so that, that helps. It wasn't so bad, was it? No. <laughs> Ready, and action. He's capturing what he's shooting from a visual perspective, but he's also capturing the emotional aspect of it. It's a story about these relationships. It's a very personal story, but in a massive landscape. This love story, that's the salvation of the planet. It's a very hopeful movie that talks about the endurance of the human spirit. This is a very special film. Gripping, thrilling, and frightening. It is about a man defending his home and protecting the woman he loves. No matter how much you try to fight against love, be oblivious to it, there's no way to fight it. Our job is not to remember. Do you remember her? Go faster? <laughs> I knew it.